The empirical formula is the lowest terms formula, the lowest whole number ratio. The molecular formula, on the other hand, shows the true number and type of atoms in a molecule. If we look at this chart, the molecular formula for each of these substances is given. The empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of the atoms in that formula. So for glucose, the empirical formula is going to be CH2O. Each of these subscripts can be divided evenly by 6 to give us a 1 to 1 ratio. It turns out that for propane, the empirical and molecular formulas are the same because there's no way to reduce C3H8 to some lower whole number ratio. The empirical formula for butane is C2H5. The empirical formula for naphthalene, which is the active ingredient in mothballs, is C5H4. For sucrose, it looks like it should be able to be reduced, but it can't be. And octane, the empirical formula is C4H9. The importance of the empirical formula is that it's often easier in the lab to find the empirical formula rather than the molecular. That's why it's important to know what it is and then often in the lab we have to do other things to help us find the molecular formula. So in this lesson we're going to learn how to find or determine an empirical formula from experimental data. This is Paolo and he is our recipe fellow. If we follow Paolo's recipe we're going to get the right answer every time. And here's how we do it. First, find the number of grams of each element. Second, convert each of those grams into moles. Then, divide each number of moles by the smallest of those number of moles. And finally, use the ratio to find the formula. We'll demonstrate that with two examples. A ruthenium sulfur compound is 67.7% ruthenium. Find its empirical formula. The first step is find the grams of each element. We're not told how many grams of each element. So let's assume for simplicity that we have 100 grams of the compound. If that's the case, 67.7 .7 of those grams are ruthenium. The other 32.3 are sulfur. We're now going to use the molar masses of those elements to convert grams into moles. This is the second step. On the periodic table, ruthenium is element number 44. It has a molar mass of about 101.1 grams. Notice that the grams cancel. From the periodic table, sulfur is element 16. Its molar mass is about 32.1. We're going to calculate then the number of moles of each of those elements. Step 3 says divide each of those numbers of moles by the smallest of those. Okay, well, obviously 0.67 is smaller than 1.006, so we're going to divide both of those by the smaller of those. That's going to give us a number of 1 there, and it's going to give us a number very, very close to 1.5 for the sulfur. Those numbers give us the ratio. Now, of course, when we write a chemical formula, we have to have whole number ratios. So we can't write RUS 1.5. We have to make it a whole number ratio. So that's going to leave us with RU2S3. We've doubled everything, changing the 1.5 to a 3, and then changing the 1 to a 2. That's your lowest whole number ratio. Let's try one more. A sample of a compound contains 4.63 grams of lead, 1.25 grams of nitrogen, and 2.87 grams of oxygen. Name the compound. Well, in order to name the compound, we need to know its formula. So let's start by trying to find its empirical formula. Step 1 says that we need to get grams of each element. That's pretty easily done here because those grams are given in the problem. The next step is convert each of those grams into moles. So we're going to look up the molar mass of each of these three elements on the periodic table and calculate the number of moles. Be very careful with Hoberfinkels such as nitrogen and oxygen. Here we are not finding moles of diatomic 
nitrogen, or moles of diatomic oxygen. We're simply finding moles of nitrogen and moles of oxygen. So we want to use the molar mass that's shown right on the table for nitrogen, which is 14, not 28 grams, which is the molar mass for N2. Similarly, for oxygen, we want just straight moles of oxygen, not moles of diatomic oxygen, which is why we have here in the denominator 16 grams of O, not 32 grams, which is the molar mass of diatomic oxygen. That's a very easy mistake to make. Try not to do it. We've now completed step two, which is calculate moles each element. Be careful not to round these numbers of moles too soon. You want to keep a decent number of decimal places in there. Step three says divide each of those numbers of moles by the smallest. So we've done that, which gives us this ratio. One mole of lead for every four moles of nitrogen for every eight moles of oxygen. Now, the question says name that compound. Well, I don't know how to name that. So is there any way we could put that into a form that might look a little bit more familiar? And the answer is yes. Because isn't it true that this formula also has four moles of nitrogen and eight moles of oxygen for every one mole of lead? Now, that we know how to name. This is the nitrite ion. Each nitrite ion has a 1 minus charge. There are four of them, as shown in that formula, which means that this lead needs to have a 4 plus charge, which means that the name of that compound is lead 4 nitrite.